Channel 4 News, Dallas-Fort Worth. Tinsley, Steve Bosch, James Spann in the Channel 4 Weather Station, and Paul Crane on sports. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. Here's the 6 o'clock report. Officials at NASA are still refusing to speculate about what might have caused the space shuttle Challenger to self-destruct, killing its crew of seven. They are not ruling out any possibility. Meantime, in thousands of cities and towns across this country, memorial services were held for the shuttle crew. Clarice Tinsley begins our coverage live from Houston. Clarice? Thank you. Good evening. Houston is a company town. That company is NASA. NASA is Houston. And for that reason, you really can feel the grief here, the impact of the shuttle tragedy. Houston, home of the astronauts, is wearing its grief in silent public display. A memorial wreath hangs in tribute to the seven Challenger crew members. Billboards that normally boast of bargains at hotels and stores now speak of the grief of Houston residents during this painful period of mourning. The signs of sorrow dot the landscape. Motorists drive with their headlights turned on. At 10.38, Houston made a sound in its sorrow. Church bells rang out for seven minutes, one minute for each shuttle crew member. Johnson Space Center work goes on with grim faces and heavy hearts. Tour groups pass through. These children from Bonner Elementary in Houston watched the shuttle explode yesterday and felt pain and sorrow. But today, some form of healing has begun. How do you feel about it today? Do you think, did you think you were going to be uncomfortable coming here to see this exhibit, or did you think it, did you think it wouldn't bother you? It wouldn't bother you. No. Did you talk about it in school? Does that help you better understand what happened? Yes. Because of their shared profession, teacher DeForest Bonner felt a special kinship with Krista McAuliffe. I was real sad and we all cried. We were real, because we were so ready for her to come back and teach, you know, things that were happening in space. So you, you personally felt that long? Right, we felt a deep hurt. From Father Tom Butler describes Houston and the space program as one large family. The seven deaths in that family have hit Houston residents hard. Well, personally, I, I grieve with my people. You can't see them hurting without you hurting. And uh, all these people are so, so close-knit and so tied up with this space program that uh, this tragedy has just knocked them off their feet. In Concord, New Hampshire, hometown of Kristen McAuliffe, the woman who would have been the first teacher in space, a number of memorial services are being held. Richard Ray reports that in that town, people are finding solace through prayer. Grocer Barry Dixon says there's a massive heartache tonight in Concord, New Hampshire. Outside his store, he has posted a sign urging church attendance and prayer. Congregations and parishes all over this city of 30,000 have done just that, holding special services for Krista McCullough, the hometown teacher who perished in Tuesday's space shuttle blast. Classes were canceled today at Concord High School, where Krista McCullough taught social studies. Instead, school officials offered counseling for students who may be troubled by what they've seen, by their collective loss. Our faculty, I think, has, has had as difficult, and perhaps a more difficult, period of adjustment than, than has our student body. Michael Garrett says the people who worked with Krista McAuliffe knew long before the rest of us how special she was. I marvel, for example, that somebody from Concord, New Hampshire could be selected as one of 11,000 people to do what Krista McAuliffe did on the one hand. And on the other hand, however, I can't conceive of a person who better personified uh, the kind of heroine that she became than Krista McAuliffe, and uh, she had the kind of quality which I think was irrepressible, and obviously NASA has noticed that as well. McAuliffe was born and raised in Boston. She moved here four years ago. 
She leaves behind in Concord her husband, two small children, and a community that feels its loss a heroin. Richard Ray, Channel 4 News, Concord, New Hampshire. Later in this newscast, Ken Caps will have a report on a former astronaut who now makes a business in space who feels that he is critical of the way NASA is running the space shuttle program. We'll have that report later in this newscast. Uh, in situations like this, there always seems to be an element that uh, wants to take advantage of the situation. Are you finding that in Houston at all? No, Steve, not at all. Not in Houston, not in Clear Lake, Texas, which is the home of the Johnson Space Center. Uh, grief and sorrow really is very genuinely felt here. Also, Clarice, you mentioned talking to some school children. Um, how well do you think they're dealing with that awful experience? I heard a psychologist this morning say that very often in times of tragedy children can be much more resilient than adults and that children can have the tendency to bounce back a lot faster i noticed watching the young people today uh, they did talk about the grief and the sadness they, they experienced yesterday but they did genuinely seem to uh, like being able to be so close to the space shuttle orbiter to take a look at what the astronauts in fact did take a look at one of the things that is very sad but is also very significant is that the explosion yesterday will be a benchmark for the young people of today. When I was nine years old, uh, President Kennedy was assassinated. I will always remember where I was in my school that day when the teacher came and made the announcement that he was killed. As people of my generation feel that way about that particular event, that assassination, uh, very sadly, young people of today will feel the same way. They will always remember where they were when they learned that the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. We'll check back with you a little bit later in the broadcast, all right? And coming up next here on the 6 o'clock report, Steve Dawson reports live from Cape Canaveral, Florida, on today's search efforts in the Atlantic. And Sheila Cooper reports on local memorials to the Challenger astronauts. By special request, your Dallas Fort Worth Honda dealers have received a giant factory allocation of new Honda Civic for an exclusive Honda Civic sale. And to meet factory objectives for this special allocation sale, over 500 new Civics must be sold by February 15th. That means you may never again see Honda prices this low or a selection this good. Every Honda Civic on sale now from 5838. Only at Huggins, Blue Bright, Eagle, Luke, Good Tank, Jim McNabb, Jim Alley, David McDavid, and Bill McDavid. Less is more, less is best, when your body's this small, say less. Only 40 calories in every full slice, but the really great taste never goes to your waist. A forte, less bread, but say yes to less, but when your body's this small, say newlywed game these newlyweds tell it like it is yeah it says that your your behind is a sight for sore eyes and your face is a sight <laughs> she says you you switch when you walk like a, like a game <laughs> thank you <laughs> he does a good too she's available join in the fun of the all new newlywed game this wednesday at 6 30 following channel 4 news at 6 it's been a day to mourn around our country, Dallas included. Here's a report from Sheila Cooper. They came by the hundreds this afternoon to mourn, to reflect, and to seek understanding. Dallas residents, like other Americans all across the country today, are asking the question why. And they belong to the God who stands beyond this universe, beyond even the buildings of our creation beyond, above, and always. As is so often the case in times of tragedy, those gathered here today saw comfort in prayer. We remember, O oh God, with gratitude, Francis R. Scobie, Michael J. Smith, Judith A. Resnick, Allison S. Anizuka, Ronald E. McNair, Gregory B. Jarvis, Krista McCullough. From all faiths, all walks of life, they united this afternoon, feeling the loss of a nation, yet feeling a personal loss as well.
Sheila Cooper, Channel 4 News, Dallas. The mood, as you would expect, is somber also at Cape Canaveral today as search crews continue to look for debris that may lend information about the cause to that shuttle disaster. We have Steve Dawson standing by live at the Cape with more on today's developments. Steve? Over and over today, Steve, NASA officials have been saying their first priority is to understand the cause of the explosion and then to take steps to fix that. Nobody knows how long that's going to take. Searching and sorrow, though, remain today's priority. Explosion stuns nation. The headline in the morning edition of the Space Coast newspaper. At the Fort Canaveral Coast Guard station, a guardsman raised the flag to half-mast in solemn tribute to the seven who died in yesterday's explosion of the shuttle Challenger. The Coast Guard is coordinating a search for debris involving five helicopters, four planes, and 13 boats, 75 miles offshore. This morning, the Coast Guard announced a 5,500-mile quarantine of the search area. There are some toxic as well as untox untoxic uh, containers out there, and uh, that's another reason we want to keep people out of the area. We don't want to endanger anyone. The local authorities have instructed beachcombers to look for any debris that might wash ashore and to contact local police if any is found. But by noon, only unconfirmed reports of some shuttle tiles on the beach. For news, most of the several hundred reporters gathered here have had little to do except wait for NASA officials to update information. This is the rocket farm at the Kennedy Space Center. On the day before a launch, the day of a launch, and the day after a launch, this place is usually teeming with people waiting to look at the exhibits. That's common. This emptiness is not. Tom Lett, who came from Ohio to watch the launch, turned his sorrow into an unofficial memorial. However, with the public tour suspended, it led plays to a very small audience. Even so, the melancholy bray of his bugle echoes the sadness felt here at the Space Center and the questions, why did it have to happen and what's going to happen now? A few minutes ago, I talked to a Department of Defense spokesman who told me they had collected about 600 pounds of debris today. Uh, the largest piece being a 15 by 15 foot piece of what looked to be aluminum. They also found some debris upon the beach. Stephen Suzanne? Steve, uh, Apollo 1 burned on the launch pad there back in 1967. Are people talking about that? Yeah, they certainly are, Steve. Texans remember the Dust Bowl. The people in Central Florida remember what we might call an economic Dust Bowl. What happened here when Apollo burned? Uh, it threw people, men with PhDs, out of work. They were forced to pump gas just to feed their families. And there is an ambivalent feeling here, despite the reassurances from the president. Suppose. Uh, the people who buy uh, space on the, uh, on the space shuttle decide to spend their dollars instead with the European consortium and uh, use unmanned space flights. They wonder what will happen to the economy here if that should happen. Is that something that people are still concerned about now, considering the shuttle disaster? It's the kind of fear, Suzanne, that just doesn't go away no matter how far in the past uh, that kind of disaster was. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Just ahead, another school bus driver arrested. And a Longview boy attacked by dogs fights for his life. I used to dread having my carpets cleaned, wasting the morning so I could be here, waiting two days for the carpet to dry. But I finally found someone I can trust to do it right, even while I'm away at work. It's all yours. Dematic gets rid of odor, dirt, oils, and 95% of the bacteria in your carpet. Dematic brings back brighter, fresher colors to your furniture and draperies. And our patented processes are safe for virtually all natural and synthetic fibers. Someone you can trust to do it right. Call Black & Moines Dematic today. Right now, there's something remarkable going on at Kroger. It's called the Kroger Extravaganza. And it means incredible savings on many of your favorite brands. Just look what's popping up this week. Save on all legs, just my size, and underalls. One-third off suggested retail price. The new diaper with the comfort waistband loves baby pants, now only $8.89. And glad kitchen trash or garbage bags, cost cutter price just $2.29. Great savings and double coupons, too. That's the Kroger extravaganza. Hey, OJ, how do I look? That's not the way you dress when you're in a T-bird, Arnie. Here, try this on. Hmm, that does feel better. Now you can rent a Thunderbird from Hertz for only $38.90 a day. Boy, Artie, this is living. You said it, OJ. Life in the fast lane. The glitter, 
Dallas County school bus driver is being held on $25,000 bond after he allegedly raped a 13-year-old special education student. 24-year-old Larry Satra was arrested yesterday and charged with aggravated sexual assault. Police say the student was repeatedly raped over a 24-hour period in an apartment across the street from the Wendell Holmes Middle School in Oak Cliff. Last week, another Dallas school bus driver was charged with molesting a special education student. And that arrest prompted a DISD background check of all of its school bus drivers. And doctors in Parkland Hospital are fighting to keep a six-year-old Longview boy alive tonight. Stephen Fiango was attacked by pit bull dogs a week ago. And Channel 4's Barbara White reports today he underwent his sixth operation. The six-year-old Stephen Fiango was wheeled out of surgery late this afternoon. Doctors fearing his chances for survival are slipping away. And at this point, I feel sort of pessimistic. I don't think uh, his chances are very good at this stage because of his infection. He is a, he's a fighter, and he's a very strong boy, so uh, we hope that uh, for a miracle. Stephen was mauled by dogs last week, bitten several hundred times all over his body. I just feel in my heart that he'll pull through. He's hung in there ever, ever, uh, uh, all the way. He'll take a nose dive, and uh, next thing you know, he's he's on the upswing. So he just he just keeps fighting for life. But tonight, the infection appears to be winning the battle. Stephen's scheduled to return to the operating room tomorrow, where doctors hope more surgery and antibiotics can keep the infection from getting worse. Stephen has already used more than 140 pints of blood and plasma, and he still needs more blood. To meet the demand, the Parkland Blood Donor Center is extending its hours. It will be open until 8 o'clock every evening through Friday. All eligible donors are welcome. Parkland says regardless of blood type, every pint donated in Stephen's name will be credited to his account. Barbara White, Channel 4 News. A Northwest Dallas woman was killed after fire engulfed her home this morning. 80-year-old Mary Thorne died of burns and smoke inhalation after her brick home caught fire. Officials say a malfunction of a heater in a garage closet started the fire, which spread to the attic and a roof with wood shingles. One firefighter received minor injuries while battling the fire, a damage estimate set at $130,000. Fire destroyed a North Fort Worth landmark just before dawn today. The M.G. Ellis School was vacant. It was used as a high school and then an elementary school. That was between 1905 and 1952. The building was under con uh, consideration as an official historic landmark. Nobody was hurt in the fire the cause under investigation. We're nearing a record dry spell again, and we hope that there will be relief on the way. By Sunday, Suzanne, there is a chance of rain, but between now and then, dry and quite warm. And we'll have details. Using soft shades of dusty blue, mauve, and cream, Landmark has come up with a most appealing, easy-to-live-with look in this elegant sofa and love seat, specially priced at Haverty's. The fabric has a nubby, silk-like texture. And notice how beautifully the slate blue pillows accent the delicate floral print. Haverty's has the sofa on sale $5.49. Love seat $4.99 at Haverty's. We've got it all. Out of the West, there's a new Jeep rolling. A pickup called Comanche. There's a new truck on the road named for the four of the year. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. And now with 7.9% financing, you can drive away in a new Comanche for as little as $170.56 per month. Test drive one today. Comanche, the legend lives on. Now with 7.9% financing from your Dallas Fort Worth Jeep Renault dealers. Right now, there's something remarkable going on at Kroger. It's called the Kroger Extravaganza, and it means incredible savings on many of your favorite brands. Just look what's popping up this week. Go Krogering this week for Cycle Dog Food. Three cans, just one dollar. 
save on fab with fabric softener that breaks the static barrier. Only $1.89. And Coronet paper towels are cost-cutter priced. Only 59 cents a roll. Great savings you just won't want to miss. That's the Kroger Extravaganza. This evening, we are watching a good-looking cold front just off the Pacific coast, possibly giving North Texas our first good chance of rain in a long time by the end of this coming weekend. Here's the satellite view, and look at all the clouds lined up along the Pacific coast. Good-looking storm, plenty of moisture, plenty of vertical motion, meaning uh, if that storm makes it across the Rockies and if it picks up moisture from the Gulf, we might see rain on Sunday or Monday. Today, our 49th consecutive dry day. Today, plenty of sunshine all across the south-central part of the country, and more sunshine is expected tomorrow. Right now, it's 58 degrees at DFW Airport under clear skies. The humidity, 34%. The pressure rising from 30.21. Winds northerly at 14 miles an hour. This morning, a weak cool front came through, giving us those north winds, but, of course, this afternoon wasn't a very cold day, so that front was only moderate. Today's high was 64 degrees. This morning's low was 40. We've recorded no rain since midnight last night, and pollen was up today. A lot of folks were bothered by that. Pretty large amount of mountain cedar, along with a small amount of grass and fungus. Now, here's the forecast for all of North Texas. Tonight, clear and cool weather with an overnight low near 38 degrees. And Thursday should be a beautiful day, sunny and warm with south winds 10 to 20 miles an hour. The afternoon high near 70. And here's Channel 4's five-day forecast. Even warmer on Friday and Saturday. In fact, on Saturday, we could approach 80 in the afternoon with partly cloudy skies. But by Sunday and Monday, when that front comes through, there will be a chance of showers or thunderstorms. And temperatures somewhat cooler by Monday with highs back in the 60s and lows back in the 50s. And Suzanne, yesterday I was at uh, one of the middle schools here, Griner Middle School in South Dallas, and I saw some eighth graders, and I want to be sure and say hello to them. Had a good time yesterday. With those 80 degree temperatures, it's almost warm enough to go water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. The first major boat show in Arlington got underway today. The exhibit is being held in the city's new $10 million convention center, designed to bring more tourists and convention dollars into Arlington. The show features fishing seminars and a swim and sail fashion show, as well as power boats, sailboats, and luxury cruisers on display. The show will run, will run through Sunday. Can we expect uh, Rolando Blackman to have a good game tonight? Well, I think he's got a little motivation, <laughs> sure. Last year he went to the All-Star game for the first time in Indianapolis. He gets to play in front of the home crowd, but he's the only one from the Mavericks. Mavericks home tonight for the San Antonio Spurs, and Rolando Blackman does have himself a little extra incentive being named to the Western Conference All-Star team as voted by the coaches. The only Maverick to play in the game which comes to Dallas a week from Sunday. Well, that's going to be special. I'm also going to be uh, a little bit more nervous. I remember Indianapolis, uh, even though there were 43,000 people, they were so far away, I didn't think it mattered. But uh, now we're going to be home here, and I'm sure when I get introduced to the crowd, it's going to be a, a thrilling feeling. I just hope that I can go out there now and have some fun and play well. Some more news out of New England today surrounding the Patriots drug testing program, some of it distressing. Fort Worth Raymond Claiborne said to be one of the players with a drug problem, prompting coach Raymond Berry to tell his team adopt some kind of testing or he resigns. Others named are Irving Fryer, Stephen Starring, Roland James, Tony Collins, and Longhorn Kenneth Sims. In Philadelphia today, Eagle owner Norman Brayman officially announces Bears defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan as Philly's new head coach. Ryan, the mastermind behind the Bears' brutal 46 defense, will get his chance to go back to Chicago next season when the Eagles play the Bears. Are uh, we going to play them in Chicago? Yeah. Well, I'm sure those fans are going to cheer me just like they have for the last eight years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. First round of the Quaker State Open underway at the Forum Bowl in Grand Prairie. The early leader is a guy named Randy Stoughton, averaging 236 per game and in search of his first ever win. Fort Worth's Bobby Meadows currently in ninth place, defending champion Mike Durbin among those who will be bowling tonight. We'll have some more uh, highlights and a story about last year's a crazy finish at the Quaker State. Okay, thanks, Paul. Still to come tonight, we'll go back to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. A former astronaut talks about NASA doing business with business. Stay with us. If you think this is an ordinary wrap, keep watching. Because this is new Glad Microwave Wrap. And this test will convince you it's no ordinary wrap. We made new Glad Microwave Wrap so heat resistant you can cook on it. So you know this wrap is made to take the heat of your microwave cooking. It's Bosley's Law. For better microwave cooking, why take chances? Get new Glad Microwave Wrap.
Right now, there's something remarkable going on at Kroger. It's called the Kroger Extravaganza, and it means incredible savings on many of your favorite brands. Just look what's popping up this week. Jimmy Dean Sausage, extra mild, regular, hot, or sage, only $1.59. Regular or thick-sliced Decker bacon, cost-cutter price, just $1.59. And save on the sizzling great taste of Eckrich Smoked Sausage, only $1.89. Great savings you just won't want to miss. That's the Kroger Extravaganza. Let's go back to Clarice Tinsley, who's live at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Clarice? Steve, the shuttle tragedy reminds all of us that space travel is still a risky and still a dangerous business. Some people see space travel as an opportunity for business exploration as opposed to space exploration. Ken Capps today talked to Deke Slayton, one of the original astronauts, about the idea of outer space as a marketplace. Deke Slayton is a former astronaut, now astro-businessman. His firm, Space Services, occupies very ordinary earthly offices between Houston and the Space Center. His job is to launch low-orbit payloads for private business. But he says that's not NASA's job. NASA's charter doesn't mandate they've got to go run a commercial space business. They're supposed to be running a government space business. Slayton says NASA has fallen into a budgetary trap that forces it to launch satellites for private companies. He says the shuttle program is now the cheapest way to get things into space. But he says astronauts are not delivery men for a space truck. They should not dangle fragilely in space for private concerns before the public. They are explorers. Congress, though, wants the shuttle to pay its own freight in the space program. And to me, that's a false premise. And NASA should not be obligated to show that the shuttle's returning the dollar for dollar to the taxpayer. That's not the prime purpose of it. Slayton says the prime purpose of the shuttle should be to put a space station in orbit, to study space, not sell it. But he hopes private business won't lose faith in the U.S. program and his business and take its payloads and paychecks to European competitors. Well, that would certainly be a lousy decision. Slayton says that's part of the problem. The space is now seen as a place where risks are taken by businessmen on the ground, not astronauts in the air. Slayton says the Challenger's unfortunate accident may fortunately change that bit of business sense. Ken Capps, Channel 4 News at the Johnson Space Center. Tonight at 10 o'clock, Ken continues our coverage with a look at Rockwell International, the company that builds the space shuttle, a company building its reputation now in Houston on the basis of the shuttle program. And I'll take you to a memorial service, a service to honor the dead astronauts and to heal the living here in the Houston area. That's tonight at 10 o'clock. Steve, Suzanne, back to you. All right, Clar Clarice. And we'll also have reports from Steve Dawson at Cape Canaveral and Richard Ray, who's in Concord, New Hampshire. That's our 6 o'clock report. Thank you for being with us. Have a nice evening. We'll see you at 10 o'clock. Good night.